All right, we have a sample problem here that's going to illustrate how to do one of these ambiguous cases. How do you know it's an ambiguous case? Because we have an angle and a side and a side. And this is not the included angle because if it was, it would be C, because C would be trapped in between A and B. So you can kind of look at the letters and get a sense of that. It does really help to have a drawing. So if I draw angle A over here, 13 degrees is not a big angle. The opposite side is going to be 6, and this is the side that I'll choose to be B. So if this is 9, 6 is going to be hanging out here, hinging. It'll be a little less than 9, so it'll be like this. And the question is, when this swings down, will I get 0, 1, or 2 triangles? So you've got to figure out, what is this gap right here? Okay, and then is 6 big enough to bridge that gap? Well, it looks like it, based on my drawing, but let's do it mathematically. I figure out that gap right there by saying, well, G is going to be equal to 9 times the sine of 13 degrees, okay? Well, the sine of 13 degrees is 0.225. 9 times 0.225 is going to give me an answer for that gap of, oops, I got an error in there. I did something wrong. 9 times the sine of 13 is uh, 2.02, so that's a tiny little gap, approximately equal to 2.02. .02. Clearly 6 is big enough to bridge that gap. So it's going to hit actually probably about out here somewhere as it swings down. So I've got one triangle that's going to be like that, but then the question is do I get a second triangle? As long as this number 6 is bigger than the gap but less than 9, there will be room for it to swing through like this and come out over here somewhere. Again, that's maybe not the world's most perfect drawing, but somewhere over here. And this will be the same length as that. there will be six. So I will, in fact, in this case, get two triangles. All right. So now I'm going to do each of those triangles. This larger one here, okay, I will redraw that, just small down here. There's my 13 degrees. There's my 9, there's my 6. I'm going to go then to the law of sines. When we have an ambiguous case, we always use the law of sines. Here are my opposite pairs, and I'm going to look for this angle right there first. That's going to be angle um, opposite my 9. That's going to be angle B. So I'll say sine of B, my unknown thing, over my known side is equal to the sine of 13 over my other known side, 6, okay? So then, angle B is going to be the inverse sine of, when I solve for this, it's going to be sine of 13 over 9, over 6, over 6 times 9, okay? So I can put that all into the calculator at once, and I'm going to have... Uh, sine of 13, then uh, times 9 divided by 6. And when I do all that, I get 19.72 degrees, or 19.7 degrees. So this out here is 19.7 degrees, okay? Well, I know that if this is 19.7 degrees, so will this be 19.7 degrees here, and I can then find this angle right there, okay? But let me finish up with this triangle first by taking 19.7 degrees and um, adding 13 degrees and then subtracting that from 180, and I get 147.3 degrees. So this up here will be 147.3 degrees, okay? And then I only need to find this side over here that's going to be side C by setting this up just like before but then saying that it's the sine of 147.3 over um, my missing length C right there. And so then I would cross multiply and solve that um, and get the length C. I guess I can do that very quickly. It's going to be um, sine sine of 147.3 
when I get this, then I'm going to divide by this fraction here. I'm just swapping places. That's the little trick I showed you guys. So that then divided by um, sine of 13 divided by 6. And I'm good to go. And I get 14.4. 14.4 is my length of C. Okay, so that's one triangle. Now I'm going to consider this little triangle here, this sliver one, and I'll redraw that as well. And that's going to be this one. Okay, so if I redraw that one right here, it would look something like this, where this is still 9, this is still 6, this is still 13 degrees, but if this part right here is the same as my 19.7, then this angle here is 180 minus 19.7. So 180 minus 20 would be 160 and then 0.3. Okay? So then I can add to that 13, 173.3. So that's uh, going to be 6.7 degrees. All right? Because it's going to go up to 180. So that's going to be just a small angle. And now I need to find this side length C. And I'm going to set up another law of sines. So I will have the sine of 6.7 degrees over mystery length C. And then that's going to be equal to um, sine of 13 over uh, its opposite side, 6. And now I'll solve this. Okay? So I'll solve the, this much like I did this one. Again, it's better to have the unknowns in the numerator. You can turn this whole thing upside down if you wanted. And um, I will get then... Okay, I just made a stupid little mistake. I think this illustrates the point that it's better to write this with the unknown in the numerator. So write this as C over the sine of 6.7 degrees. And that's going to be equal to 6 over the sine of 13 degrees. Okay? So then to solve this, what I'm going to do is have 6, 6 divided by sine of 13. Okay? That gives me 26.67. Then multiply this by the sine of 6.7 times sine 6.7 and I get 3.11, all right? So then this little one here is 3.1 when I round that, okay? So there are the two different triangles. Label them clearly, get all the angles and the side lengths on there, and that is how you do that example of the, the ambiguous case. All right, good luck.